Patrick Hartford with RP Oil Field Service Inc. out of Rock Springs, Wyoming. Outstanding. Thank you, Patrick Hartford. Rock Springs, that's right on the interstate, isn't it? On the western side of the state? Right through the I-80 corridor. Yep, yep. Okay, I've, I've driven through there many, many times, uh, taking that taking that route through there. Uh, well, welcome to the program here, The Crude Life. Thank you for joining us today. I wanted to ask you about something that popped up on social media. I think it was LinkedIn specifically. And anchors in Wyoming, and you know uh, that kind of got my attention a little bit on you know what it is, how that's related to the oil and gas industry, and what you guys are doing that made you affiliated with it. So, uh, Patrick Hartford, how are you doing today? Good. How you been? Well, you know, not too bad. You know, we're getting ready for 2020. It's already started, and it's it seems to be a pretty important year. And I'd like to get your thoughts on that in just a moment or two, because. You know, with the the election the way it is, and Colorado has already got the war drums beating loud there, and you're in Wyoming, and man, business is good in Wyoming, and North Dakota still put, pumping out a million plus barrels, and Texas is Texas. So, um, anchors in Wyoming, what's what's that all about, and uh, how's that affiliated, and how are you guys affiliated? So, I guess the the long short of that is, uh, you know, every time. Uh, a workover rig or completion rig or pulling unit, whatever you want to call them, pulls onto a location in the state of Wyoming. They got to tie off to uh, guy line anchors, and all those really do is support that rig. It's more of a making sure it doesn't topple over in the wind because I know if anyone that's been in this area, especially Southwest Wyoming, we get a little bit of wind here and there. <laughs> little, yeah, it's good kite weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it's it's just another safety precaution that they take. And uh, it's it's an inch and a quarter rod. They can run anywhere from six feet to twelve feet long. And there's expanding expanding flower on the bottom of those. And uh, that's what they tie off the rig to is for those anchors, like I said. And that just kind of helps stabilize the rig, whether you're pulling a lot of weight or in a high wind situation. It kind of keeps keeps the rig safe and and makes sure everyone around can do their job in a safe manner and i should mention too and i didn't preface this very good that this is um this was a a a social media post put out by the wyoming oil and gas industry safety alliance and what they're doing is basically reminding people about these anchor testing concerns and you know some of the osha requirements etc and you guys have over 30 years of experience you're saying huh we do it's and it's kind of you know, setting and testing safety anchors in the oil field is kind of, uh, you know, it's it's not talked about a lot. and It's kind of something that just goes under the radar that isn't a big concern. It's not something a lot of people think about when it comes to, you know, planning your location or, or bringing rigs in. But um, in my opinion, it's one of the, the most important safety precautions you can take when you're going to go and do any type of intervention work over at Wellhead. I think right now, and this is a whole new topic, in fact, I might even bring this up um, as a topic thread for future shows because uh, one of the things I've been keeping an eye on is like the chemical uh, the chemical industry really had a lot of snake oil salesmen come out of nowhere. And they, you know, they had some great salesmen and it really caused a lot of industry some problems and the Texas oil field, uh, the railroad commission's dealing with it down there because uh, the oil companies are on the hook, basically. The, the chemical service companies aren't, you know, the, the whatevers are and that sort of thing. I was getting that feeling with safety because, boy, I tell you, there was a lot of fear-mongering stories coming out and safety this and safety that. And I, I remember thinking going, the oil field industry I've known it was is pretty proactive on things, and they're not big braggers on things. And so I would look at something like you know thirty years of experience with some safety as uh, that that must really speak volumes is what I get, I'm getting at. You know I'm I, I I don't know your comments on what I said about the chuck and jivers, but it just certainly seems like. Uh, I think there's more people talking about safety and they're doing it in a way to basically profit on it as opposed to inform. Does that make sense? Or yeah, I, that, yeah. yeah, no, no, it does. And that's kind of the, the double edged sword on that. Is, yeah. Is like you said, you, from as long as I've been in the oil field, safety has been, you know, at the forefront. Um, so I'm, I'm not very old. I'm only 30 years old this year, 
but I've been around oil and gas my entire life. Um, my family has. <clears throat> my dad just retired from a 40-year career in the oil and gas field. Both my siblings are tied into it in one aspect or another. So it's just kind of been a in our blood. And the safety culture of it, like you mentioned before, is just something that's been ingrained with us. And like you said, it's not something that you brag about or you hear a lot about. It's just kind of been part of normal operations for as long as I've been around it. Well, and a lot of it too is, you know, I, I, I make no secret about it. I grew up in the ag world, so I'm a little more familiar with the energy side, but there is some parallels there and, and there is some commonalities and some respects part. And a lot of people don't know this, but the ag industry was actually the most dangerous for years and years. And I still think it might be the number one in terms of workplace fatalities, but a lot of times the unfortunate double, the double-edged sword is the other side of that is, you know, you get some new safety precautions and requirements out of that. And one of the reasons that the oil and gas industry is so proactive is because it saves lives. This, this is not, you know, this is not for, you know, it looks this way and we need to look, you know, make sure it has roses and puppies and kittens. No, this is because it saves lives. And, and these lives are people that are leaders in communities. So they understand kind of the impact behind that. But um, 30 years, yeah, so you must have heard a few stories growing up. Yeah, a, a couple here and there. Yeah. Where are you guys doing business now? What's that? Uh, where are you guys doing business? Just Wyoming or um, do you got other states? Mo- mostly Wyoming. And then uh, we do dip down into Colorado here and there. Um, the easiest way I explain it to, to my customers and, and anyone asking is you, you draw a 100-mile radius around Rock Springs, Wyoming, and I could have crews in any direction, any day. Okay, and uh, Rock Springs, that's over in the Powder River on the west side of the state. I, I've seen reports where they're looking at 30 years of uh, energy activity that's going to happen there. Yeah, we're at Rock Springs is kind of centrally located. Uh, you know, we have the, the Tabor Rock Field and obviously Wom Sutter uh, area about 50 miles away on, on I-80, which has been a, a huge um, gas producer for the past decade or two we're right right within range of the jonah field which i'm sure everyone's heard about um and then you know you head north towards fontanelle and the barge area in wyoming where they've been drilling oil wells since the early 1900s and they're they're still going so we're kind of right in the heart heart of southwest wyoming as far as oil and gas exploration production goes Oh, no kidding. You guys are right. There. Aren't you right down the road from Little America and, and, of course, Green River? Who can forget Green River if you're in the oil and gas area? But isn't that Little America just right down the road from you guys? Little America, I believe, is about 30 miles okay. uh, west of here. Yeah, it's it's quite a gas station. That's where I got um, uh, cheddar, sour cream and onion, and salt and vinegar flavored crickets for my son's uh, Easter basket one year. I thought, you know, yep. I'm, I'm going to put some crickets in there. Why not? And uh, make sure. Okay, so uh, outstanding. Um, what do you guys make for 2020 this year? Is um, You know, uh, you mentioned you do some business down in, in Colorado. Are you hearing anything for what they have going on with some of the proposition stuff? Is it uh, is it getting um, difficult to work in the industry? Are you getting sneers at the schools? <laughs> I mean... I, I follow, yeah, we do. We, we follow a little bit of the, of course, the Prop 112, and, you know, you're reading now they're trying to bring some of that stuff back on a new ballot, and and we follow that stuff. It doesn't affect us quite as much as, uh, you know, maybe over by Cheyenne area when you dip down into Fort Collins mm-hmm. and Denver, kind of in that, in that basin. It doesn't affect us too much. Um, we got a couple smaller gas fields uh, just south of the Wyoming border, kind of in the Hiawatha area. We do some work for some customers. So it, it does impact us to a point, um, but we're not in the heart of where they're drilling and, and actively trying to grow and expand fields right now. So um, doesn't, it doesn't impact us as much as some of those other companies on the other side of the state. So really it's just the television and the media um, that is kind of anti energy in, in your guys's communities it's like it's like that in western north dakota where if you live in an oil and gas town in a community pretty much everybody's it you know they're they're, they're cool with it <laughs> they're good with it they they you know the cafe owners to the churches to the salons everybody seems to be okay well, it, with it yeah well it, it creates you know it 
it makes your economy better the whole way around. You know, if, if you're drilling oil and gas wells, you have people going to work and, you, you know, you're making a, a pretty dang good living doing that. And those people go out and they support the community. And just from what I've been involved in the oil and gas, you know, community is uh, they like to give back to where they're at. We, we do a lot of outreach and, um, you know, programs around here, just the Rock Springs community, as far as fundraisers and things like that. So when you're drilling and not, not to mention even just the state revenue and the royalties, but it really impacts everyone, whether you're actively in it or not, it, there's a, there's a positive economic impact for, for everyone around. You mentioned you're 30 years old. Um, do you find that people your age are, do they have a perception of, of, of your job? I mean, do you have to defend yourself at all, or do you pretty much just stick or stick around that side of the state and every, everybody's okay with um, the energy industry? The reason I bring that up is, you know, I was in Fort Collins about five years ago, and I started noticing people would look over their shoulder before they'd mentioned they worked in the oil and gas industry. I, I've noticed it, it's kind of different, like you said, depending on where you're at, especially in the state. Um, Wyoming is a is heavy on energy. Not only do we have, like I said, oil and gas, but we have a lot of, uh, in our area, trona mining and soda ash along with coal producers. So we're a very energy dependent state. That's where we get a lot of our revenue and our, and our taxes from, and that funds a lot of our programs. So Southwest Wyoming is very favorable of, of energy. Um, I did get my uh, degree in business management from the University of Wyoming on the other side of the state, Laramie, which, like I said, is by Cheyenne, closer to Fort Collins. And kind of as you move that direction, you do have that, that split between the, the people that see the good that it can do and, uh, um, you know, making sure that we, we do things the right way. And then there's always going to be some of those people that just don't, they don't understand it. And, you know, they just kind of believe everything they see on the news or believe everything that they hear and, and look at these oil spills and everything like that and just assume that's how the industry operates. But when you look at it, you know, they're actually very efficient. They're very environmentally conscious. And we do a lot of things to make sure that we keep, you know, our state where we live clean. Patrick Hartford, RP Oil Field Services. Uh, just kind of wrapping up a little bit. What do you want people to know? What do you want people to remember? What's um, some of the takeaways you want people to... Uh, have from this interview you know this um this is this oil and gas industry um i've met some of the best people i've ever met in my life doing this from my experience it's a lot of hard-working people that are out here to feed their families uh make a good living and grow grow the economy and do good by their local community and i think it's a tight-knit group no matter where you go and um there's obviously that influx you know the baby boomers are kind of they're retiring and moving their way out and kind of more of my generation is coming in. I think when we're making some exciting changes with using new technology, looking at things from a different perspective and hopefully still hold on to some of that hard work ethic and accountability that we can incorporate and, and keep this, this whole industry growing. 